Astrotometry log. It is February 17th, 2011. It's approximately 22:23 at the time of this recording. This is a follow-up on the coronal mass ejection that was ejected from active region 1158 after a X-class flare on the 15th of February. X-ray activity from this region has continued. This is the X-class flare over here but it hasn't been nearly as significant as it was. And as I mentioned in the previous video, the reason that this was in the X-class, the reason that this was such a significant flare, is because this region was facing the Earth when the ejection took place. And cycle 24 is starting to get its shine on. This is the X-ray curve uh, since February 3rd. And you can see we've got some significant area under the curve which means the general amount of energy we've been receiving in the higher bands has been steadily increasing. But the solar wind has sort of unexpectedly dropped. And there's a number of possible reasons for this, considering that the influence of this coronal mass ejection uh, should be arriving right now. One of the theories in astrotometry is that these events are associated with something called a flux transfer event and that in the process of traveling to the earth this particle storm what would be particle storm can actually move through time and space in an inconsistent way and that that is actually what is the creator of these sort of cyclonic storms beneath the atmosphere because there's this space between the above and the below this emptiness that is a sort of uh, no man's land as far as matter goes because of the nature of the physical manifestation of matter as it relates to frequency relationships which are strictly dependent on things like wavelength and so there's a particular distance that the earth is from the sun that represents a sort of wavelength and these events can actually materialize and dematerialize physical matter and they move it in ways that can only be really explained on the subatomic level in other words there's a spin uh, disposition that these sorts of things take on that while it manifests in these very large effects such as the cyclones isn't seen isn't observable on the level of the field itself. And so if you consider the history, this coronal mass ejection, as I mentioned before, isn't as large as some of the coronal mass ejections we have seen. And as far as mass goes, it's not particularly large. If you consider the previous correlation with Cyclone Rita, you have a, a much, much larger coronal mass ejection that is Earth-directed. But there's a several anomalies with the, with the Rita ejection. This is on um, September the 13th, uh, 2005. And this is five days before Rita formed. It took longer for this coronal mass ejection to form into a cyclone for some reason. Time is usually between two and three days between the time the coronal mass ejection is ejected and the time that the storm starts forming. And if you look at the spot that ejected Rita, uh, it's here in the southern hemisphere and it's nearly earth facing. The spot itself crossed the uh, pole, the solar pole, during the travel time of the coronal mass ejection. And so while the coronal mass ejection was traveling to the Earth, the, the spot that ejected it crossed the solar pole. And that could have something to do with the transposition into the Northern Hemisphere. And Rita formed on September 18th, 2005. It was a huge, huge cyclone. And I'm not looking for a cyclone as large as Rita from this event. Because you can see this is a much less massive event. And even though it was an X-class flare, even though it's a significant event, 
I'm looking for more in the category four or three possibly class. So definitely I would think a category three cyclone. So category four cyclone is likely uh, possibly a category five cyclone. So as far as the location for this, the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory is tracking 90P. They're investigating off the east of Australia. The most likely position right now for this storm to be forming is right here. And so this storm could be forming into a category three to five cyclone. This cyclone off to the west of Australia is likely associated with the M-class event and the Earth-directed CME we saw last week. And so this is the remainder of the M-class event. And if they're proportionally sized, this event could be much, much larger. And so I'm watching the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory's 90P Invest, and I'm suspecting that this will be a named storm in the next couple of days and could possibly turn into a Category 4, maybe a Category 5 cyclone. If you look at the sunspots that this disturbance was ejected from, this is normal sunspot activity for this part of the cycle. You could even say that this is below normal activity. This isn't something to be concerned about. This is just a new technology, just a new uh, method of understanding the nature of nature. And so this isn't uh, something to get panicked about other than what it can give us as far as uh, heads up on the development of these sorts of storms. Thanks for watching.